Yo, what's good? Marcus here. Welcome to Valorant Academy number three, which is top five tips and tricks I can give you as low ranked players to get into the ranks such as platinum and higher. If you do like this video, please, please, please share it. Please like it. Please comment what you want to see next week. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel. We're nearly at 5,000 subs. I appreciate it. Enjoy. So the first tip I want to go through is crosshair placement. I get a lot of people coming to my Twitch and they often ask, how do I improve my aim? And I always tell them that crosshair placement is by far the most important. So when walking around the map and you're pushing with your team or you're holding an angle, you need to always aim your crosshair at head height. You need to always be thinking, where is the enemy going to come from? And where should my crosshair place? This way, you only have to make minor adjustments to your aim instead of relying on crazy flicks. So somebody with good crosshair placement will be a better aimer that stares at their feet every time. If you want to aim better, I would say jump into a custom game and run around the map and try and consistently aim your crosshair where the enemy's head is most likely to be. This should become second nature to you, so you want to practice this every time you log on. Now, if you start doing this, you will soon realise something very important about crosshair placement. The map is designed with changing elevation. If there is a small step down, like for example in lamps on bind, ensure as you go up or down those steps, you move your crosshair at the same pace. You need to think, if someone comes around the corner, are you ready to headshot them? Once you get a little bit more advanced, so are your opponents, obviously. But you can use the enemy's crosshair placement to your advantage. I'd say a good example of this is when you know someone's holding the angle and you don't have any utility to clear them out, such as a flash, you can choose to wide swing that corner and throw his aim off. As he starts shooting, he'll have to readjust his aim while controlling the spray pattern and you more often than not can get the drop on him. Another specific example would be in ropes on split, so the drop. People aim their crosshairs at the top of ropes. If you suspect someone is waiting for you, you can jump into the ropes, using them to go down. You'll surprise the enemy, and that way you'll have a bigger chance of killing him. Also another way you can throw off somebody's aim by using the ropes is by dangling from them at a low angle. If you hold the door in a tower, the more people coming in, they won't often expect you to be holding that low to the ground. One more important thing to do when you're holding an angle, you want to make sure you leave a bit of space between your crosshair and the wall slash corner. When you watch a very high skilled player holding an angle, their crosshair is often very, very close to the wall, but that's because their reaction times are very fast, better than the average player. If you're a low ranked player, you most likely don't have the same reaction time as a radiant player, so what you want to do is leave a bit more space between your crosshair and the corner or the wall, and that way you'll have more time to react when they peek. The second tip I want to go through is HUD awareness. The HUD just means heads up display. So someone who attempts to teach their 50 year old dad to play Valorant, I can confirm he does not use his HUD. He tells me this and I believe it's a very common thing that many low ranked players or new players ignore as well. The first part of the HUD I want to talk about is the minimap settings. Often I hear people complaining that their team doesn't communicate in any way. So I'm here to tell you that all you need is your HUD. The minimap in the top left of your screen relays a huge amount of essential information. The default settings for the minimap aren't ideal and I'll quickly go through why. So when you're on B site ascent for example, you're not able to see what is going on at A. To change this, apply these settings. You want to make sure it's on rotate, so not fixed. Make sure where it says keep the player centered, it is on. And then you want to choose a size that you like. Don't be afraid to go too big. Me personally, I have mine on 1.2. Adjust the zoom level to 0.9 so every map fits well within the circle. This will be helpful for a lot of reasons. You'll be able to see where teammates die with the blue X, where enemies have died with the red X, and also where enemies have been spotted during the round. If one of your teammates sees an enemy, that enemy will appear on the map. This way, you don't need your team to make calls. Spike position is also very key when attacking as it may be quite a distance away from you and you might have to recover it. So quickly looking at the map for the yellow spike logo is very helpful. The second part of the HUD you should be aware of is where the agent pictures are at the top. If they have a yellow box behind their photo it means their ultimate is ready. You need to be aware of that. The common reason I use this is for ultimates like brimstones where if he has it ready I will not sit in areas such as lamps. He can ultimate the whole building and it's more than likely you won't be able to escape. 
Also, looking if Sage has her ultimate ready is very key, as if you kill an enemy, you need to be wary if she is going to run to their dead body and revive them. Green boxes behind the agent photo means their ultimate is in use if it has a duration, for example Phoenix and Reigns. Third and final HUD awareness tip is to keep an eye on the kill feed in the top right. Combined with looking at the minimap, this kill field will not only tell you who's still alive in the round, but it will also inform you as to where the surviving members of each team are held up. My dad even goes as far as not looking at how many players are left alive, so he is cautious of his position even though the last player is being shot at the other side of the map. The third tip I want to go through is communication. It is great to get into the habit of speaking to your teammates when necessary, even if it's just greeting your teammates to boost morale before the game starts. Yo, 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 yo. Details like how much damage you do to enemies, where the remaining enemies were last seen, and telling your teammates what utility you're about to use are some of the most important pieces of communication. By utility, I mainly mean flashes such as calling a breach flash so your teammates don't get blinded or they can peek on the flash. Also, calling smokes so your teammates know which place on the map they don't need to focus on and hold. I want to link communication to a small tip I was considering adding to this video, which is calling any sounds you hear. This can vary from hearing if the enemy is picking up an ultimate orb, for example, on bind in toilets, or if you hear them spray on a wall, or even a step made when they're getting close to a bomb site. You can also hear if someone drops the spike, and this will often give away the position of the enemy team and where they're roughly going to be heading, like what site they're going to be heading to on the map. Calling how many you hear is even better than saying someone has taken a couple of steps, as if there are only two players left alive and you can hear two sets of footsteps, this needs to be called that they are both there. One fact you may not know, it's very interesting, is that all agents on Valorant have different footsteps. Of course this communication will change with the new agent Yoru, because he can fake footsteps and this will make it look like he's not alone and do a fake push. So if there's a Yoru in this <laughs> next episode, you need to be aware of fake footsteps. Coming from a Counter-Strike background, I understand the economy fairly well, but I mean, if you're new to economy rules like this and being at a lower rank, it's probably going to be difficult to understand, so I want to go through the basics of the economy environment. For that, there's a few words I want to explain to you. Pistol round means the first round and the 13th round. A save and an eco round. This means that you don't buy anything or you buy very, very minimal. Full buy is where you buy all your abilities, you buy a main assault rifle and you also buy armor. Force buy means use all your money up, get a few abilities, get maybe full armor and a stinger. When playing the first round, if you lose it, unless you've applied the bomb for the extra 300, the wise thing to do is to fully save all your money on round 2 and have a strong buy in round 3. If you do force on round 2 and lose, then you need to half buy, meaning a pistol and half armor on round 3, preparing for a main gun buy on round 4. On the other hand, if you do win the pistol, I tend to then buy a spectre and full armor and most of my abilities as this is the safest way to win a round. A good point to remember, if you know you are going to lose the pistol round and the bomb's going to explode, you need to die to it because recent changes to the Valorant economy means if you save your life on a round, you'll get less money given to you on the next. Therefore, being able to keep in line with your team's economy is very, very important. In fact, keeping in line with the team's economy, it will make it much easier for you to win the game. In the late stages of the game, if you do end up losing a round and your team has no money, communicate that you want to save and just eco one round, meaning you do not buy anything and you have enough for a good buy on the next round. If you have enough money to full buy, but won't have enough to do so again next round and your teammates are already broke, you might want to consider a half buy, which most of the time means you're buying a spectre, a stinger, or even a sheriff and light armor. So, you have a gun, but it's not an expensive one, and you still have enough to buy a good gun and full armor next round. Trigger discipline in Valorant is very important when the situation presents itself. Of course, this only matters if the enemies don't check the corner, but I think I'm not wrong when I say corners don't get checked enough in low ranks. A good situation where trigger discipline also comes in handy is when the bomb is planted and you're in a 1 vs 2 situation. You want to shoot the player who's protecting the diffuser and then shoot the diffuser if you can see them both in your view. Because this means the diffuser will have a moment where he cannot fire after coming off the bomb and he's probably going to be a stationary target once you've killed the first one. People may refer to this as target selection, but you still need to be disciplined in not shooting the diffuser until you see the other enemies.